Senin için Ladlan. <gülüyor> Congratulations, Senator Bilek. Um, Uh, Ms. Uh, Madam Acting Deputy President, I just rise to make some quick observations on Foreign Minister Julie Bishop's uh, comments over the last couple of days, that if Australia was going to be dragged by the global community to make some kind of contribution to the task of decarbonising our economy, then it was an obvious conclusion in her view that nuclear power would have to be brought into the energy mix. Um, I would understand the reasoning behind Ms Bishop's statement to be that we now have um, 60 years of operating experience for a technology that provides utility-scale baseload electricity, and while carbon emissions from the, the back-end fuel chain behind fission reactors are certainly um, not zero, they are nonetheless a lot lower than coal and gas. So while Ms Bishop thinks—and uh, these are quite reasonable prospects, I would, I would add. Um, while Ms Bishop thinks that building fission reactors in Australia is an obvious conclusion, she also did acknowledge—I think it's very important—that there would have to be a public debate about the idea, because for a variety of reasons other people have come to very different conclusions. Um, and I've noticed that some people, particularly young people, um, who were tempted by uh, a lot of other positions that the Greens take and agree with us um, on a lot of our work, nonetheless are perplexed as to why we are as opposed to nuclear energy and, and all elements of the nuclear fuel chain, from mining all the way through to weapons and waste. Um, and it's come up, for example, on all of the um, AMAs that I've done on Reddit. It comes up frequently on social media um, and in response to some of my um, contributions over the last couple of days. Uh, and it can come in one of two forms. One simply being, why are the Greens against science? You listen to the global climate science community. Why do you not believe that nuclear energy could play a role in a balanced energy mix. That's one. Um, the other one, I guess, is the sort of George Monbiot view of the world, which, which is somebody who takes climate change very seriously. He's steeped in um, the climate science and the politics of climate change and has come to the view, I don't think I risk paraphrasing him too, too crudely, that we should just build anything. Uh, any low or zero carbon form of electricity should be on the table because the crisis that we face um, with the climate is that serious. And I guess it's to people who would hold either of those views that I want to make some quick comments today um, and push back gently and respectfully on the idea that people who formed a view that nuclear energy would be a disaster in Australia as it has been elsewhere is a view that we formed purely on the basis of emotion or the fact that we're scared of radiation or that we have some kind of um, emotional or, as the Prime Minister said, theological opposition. I don't have a theological opposition to nuclear power or to much else. I have a very practical series of reasons for being opposed to it. Um, for decades, the, reason, uh, the nations that decided to go nuclear have relied on um, a couple of, of varieties of, of uranium fission plants, either in pressurised water reactors, boiling water reactors, or for a small number of nations, principally Canada and India, um, heavy water can-do reactors that don't require uranium enrichment. Now, that is the fleet of reactors that we're stuck with, uh, the kind of reactor that, that went up at Chernobyl, the kind of reactor that was um, catastrophically wrecked at Fukushima uh, in Japan, Three Mile Island plant, all first, second um, generation fission, uranium fission reactors. And the reason that I think, um, by all means, let's have the debate, we've been having the debate in this country for nearly 60 years, and there are very sound reasons why nuclear proponents keep losing that debate. It's not that the debate can't be had or that we're proposing to censor their views. It's just that there are really sound reasons why they're not being built here and, in my view, why they simply never will. Um, Dr Ziggy Switkowski, I guess the last person who, at the behest of the Howard government, the last turn of the wheel of this debate, the conservative side of politics reluctantly dragged to the inevitable conclusion that we need to decarbonise our electricity sector. Uh, the only form of electricity that seems to make sense is nuclear. So Dr Switkowski in 2007 undertook his review for the Howard government. His conclusions broadly said that you would need, um, as cited by Bernard Keane and Crikey this week, you'd need a carbon price between $20 and $50 a tonne. Um, and uh, of course at that level of carbon price, to give you a step up because of how expensive it is, you obviously priced in all of the renewable energy competitors, which would very quickly run away um, and, and out-compete nukes. Um, to look at the kind of plants that are being built um, around the world and the catastrophic degree to which they are running behind budget and over cost. Flamanville in France was originally budgeted to cost 3.3 million euros. 
Um, by December of 2012, the cost had increased to 8.5 billion euros, and the completion date blown out by five years. Um, very similar story um, elsewhere, where third-generation plants are under construction or proposed for construction. Um, I would say to anybody who believes that opposition to nuclear energy is based solely on emotion or irrationality to just look at the data. And a very good source for that is the World Nuclear Industry Status Report. The most recent one was published a couple of months ago by Michael Schneider and Anthony Froggatt. They've been publishing these for five or six years. And it is the best source of independent data on how the industry is tracking. Um, and the statistics are actually quite forbidding. And they led me to the view quite a few years ago that globally the commercial nuclear industry is on its knees. Um, not, not through any kind of ideological obstruction, although absolutely the global anti-nuclear movement has played its part, but mostly, partly at least, on grounds of cost. It is ruinously expensive um, to build in the kind of redundant safety systems that you need to have a reasonable chance of a fissioning uranium reactor not blowing itself all over the landscape. Certainly the industry um, believes it's got better at it over recent decades, but that is one of the principal reasons that is so expensive to build these plants, is because on a bad day, entire regions can get depopulated. Whether it's a tsunami-earthquake combination, uh, whether it's a failed engineering experiment, as was the case in Chernobyl, faulty uh, instrumentation or operator error at Three Mile Island, if you cut the cooling systems from a fissioning reactor, uh, you risk a meltdown which compromises the reactor's containment system and can then lead to the evacuation of hundreds of thousands or even millions of people. It's that serious. That's why these things are so expensive. And so, according to the World Nuclear Industry Status Report, um, the IEA, the International Energy Agency, cites 20, uh, 2000 to 13 global investments in power plants were split between renewables, 57 per cent, fossil fuels, 40 per cent, nuclear power, 3 per cent. It's actually kind of over. Uh, and the opportunities are very, very rapidly dwindling for the industry to take off here in Australia. Part of the reason of that is that renewable energy technologies are quite simply eating them alive. Small, fast, easy to deploy, cheap, much more labour intensive. You can bring them onto the grid, either small distributed microgrids or fit them into large grids, um, much more easily than multi gigawatt scale nuclear power plants. Um, and again, this is not the Greens' view, although it's something that I'm very strongly um, supportive of and optimistic of. This is just what the data says. The investment that's going into clean energy around the world compared to faltering and ultimately failing investment in nuclear um, really tells the story. Um, those, again, who take issue with the Greens' objection to the current generation of nuclear power plants that have proven um, themselves basically to be obsolete, is, well, what about what's coming next? What about thorium? Uh, what about molten salt? What about maybe even fusion plants? Um, what, what about what might just be on the horizon? Why would you oppose those um, before you've even seen them tested? Um, and two things come to mind. Firstly, this technology doesn't exist yet. Nobody has built any of these things uh, at anything approaching a commercial scale, despite tens of billions of dollars of development funding, not through lack of trying. Uh, and optimistically, really, these things are decades away if, if they could um, magically appear at all. And as anybody following climate science even peripherally will know, we don't have decades. This challenge is upon us now, which is, again, all the more impressive um, seeing uh, renewable deployment accelerating so rapidly and outpacing solar and nuclear. The second issue is, to me, not being an engineer, but to me, all of these sound like absurdly expensive and complex ways to boil water with the probable exception of fusion plants, all of these exotic technologies do nothing more than bring water up to boiling point, um, hot enough to raise steam to spin a turbine. Um, the other, or there, there are many reasons, I guess, why we take these positions, one of them simply being the unavoidable weapons link. And the reason that so much investment's been poured into nukes over recent decades is that the technology for enrichment or fuel reprocessing is precisely the same as the technology you need if you are enriching or reprocessing for nuclear weapons. And that's why uh, it's absurd to see our own future fund still very heavily invested uh, in nuclear weapons, in it up to its neck, in fact. Um, but also the fact that the Red Cross uh, uh, has recently conducted a poll that indicated that eight out of ten Australians say it's time to ban nuclear weapons. Uh, and if you, uh, I think we need to really take heed of the fact that popular opinion is very strongly against 
this technology as much as markets. I just want to also acknowledge in the remaining seconds that it is 30 years this week since Senator Joe Valentine was elected to this place on a platform of nuclear disarmament.